Hello, my name is Von Steinstra. I'm the president of the China Speakers Bureau. One of our speakers is Ian Johnson. Ian is uh, working for the New York Times and other publications and has been focusing very much on the rise of new spiritual values among Chinese, which is, um, uh, well, China has always been looked at as, as a country where all values were effectively killed off by the Communist Party, but people are looking for more. And, and Ian, can, can you explain a bit what's happening on the ground? Well, I think that there's um, a big surge in people looking for answers to life, looking for values. The government has been trying to do this for a long time, of course. Uh, the communists came to power promising communist values, and for a while some people believed in that, but certainly by the end of the Cultural Revolution, belief in communism as an ideal was pretty much dead. Um, and the government, you know, it still pushes some communist ideas, but this is basically just background noise that nobody really listens to anymore. Instead, what you've seen, especially over the past decade, has been a huge rise in organized religion, but also unorganized uh, religion and more unofficial things. Like, maybe we should explain it. Like in China, you need, like for everything, you need the permission to also to do and an, 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 uh, to, to organize a religion. Yeah. Um, so in China, there are five official religions. Um, that is Taoism, Buddhism, Islam, and then Christianity is divided into two, Protestantism and Catholicism. So those are the five. Um, those are run by committees that are loyal to the Communist Party, but they are also legitimate places. They run legitimate places to, of worship, uh, churches, mosques, temples across this, the country. Uh, thousands of them, tens of thousands of them. Those places are seeing a big rise in their attendance. Churches are packed, mosques are full, temples are being rebuilt across the country, and the new government under Xi Jinping is supporting especially traditional religion, that would be Buddhism and Taoism, um, over the others as well, because it sees this as something that uh, is happening in China and it wants to support at least the indigenous religion. Yeah, well, maybe because most people will remember all these actions of the Communist Party or the government against crosses on churches. Um, but you say the main tendency is that the government is supporting this kind of search for new values. I think overall, yes. Um, they don't like any kind of spiritual group or religious group or any kind of group, NGO, political, whatever, with any foreign ties. So if they think there are foreign links, this is a problem. That would be, for example, the Roman Catholic Church has trouble there, uh, Islam, and some Protestant groups um, as well. Um, that's why it sort of favors Buddhism and Taoism, because they, the government thinks there's no foreign, or not so much foreign influence in these areas. So that's the sort of one side of it. And then there's much more unofficial things as well. There are private gurus and uh, workshops, retreats that people are going to, especially yuppies, going to fasting weekends, going to hear popular Tibetan Buddhist uh, masters who come and speak at a weekend retreat. And they pay a lot of money for this as well, by the way. Uh, a friend of mine joined this one Taoist group and she paid 50,000 yuan, so that's nearly $10,000 for one year where she could go to lectures every month if she wanted to. It's quite, quite a significant uh, outlay of money, but for some people it's really worth it. Um, and so you have people, motivational speakers as well, people who are giving answers to very practical questions that people have. You know, how do I live ethically in a society where there is so much corruption, where there are so many problems, where the environment is ruined? Is it, how do I live a good life? What makes, what makes me happy or how can I find happiness? Um, these are sort of abstract questions in a way, but they underlie uh, society, just like they underlie any society um, around the world. And I think they're really important if we want to understand what makes Chinese people tick. What's the soul of this new superpower in China right now? And what do, we, what do you think? Is, are people mostly shopping around, trying to pick up the, the thing that matches their needs best and go next week to another? Uh, 
trend or is, is, is there some more solid development? Oh, I think there is a lot of shopping around. I think there's, it's, it's very much sort of like um, the New Age movement, you know, in the, in the West where people might uh, dabble in a bit of occultism or a little bit of, uh, uh, say, North American Indian spiritualism. Uh, there are a lot of people do that. They're hopping around from one thing to another, following even Western ideas from the 20th century, like anthroposophy and the ideas of Rudolf Steiner and these other mystics from the early uh, 20th century, um, sending their kids to Waldorf schools and, and things like that because they believe in this and reincarnation. But there are people who are, are very serious also, who are becoming... Uh, who are becoming official lay members of their Buddhist community. Uh, there's, a, there, there's a big active Buddhist temple on the outskirts of Beijing that has uh, groups all over, in all the, all the neighborhoods around Beijing as well. And of course, the rise of churches for our Chinese yuppies, this is a big issue. White collar people in China uh, go to big churches and in Shanghai, Beijing, Chengdu, uh, and many, many other big cities in China, you have people who are often working for Fortune 500 companies who are starting their own or, or joining uh, churches that are uh, unofficial churches that are yeah. not part of the government. Well, that's maybe important to, 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 to let you talk about because you, you mentioned it's well-educated, wealthy people who, who do that. Now, in China, you have very fast a bit of a mass, even when it's about the well-educated, wealthy. but. What's happening to other segments in, in society? You see, middle class, lower class people, is, is there also the sense of searching for values or is it more a yuppie thing? Um, no, I mentioned the yuppies because I think often this is something w which also has sort of a, in, in a way a commercial application as well because trying to get into the minds of these consumers. But no, I'm, uh, for, my, for a book I'm working on right now, I follow, for example, a pilgrimage society. Uh, and these are made up of working class people in Beijing and they're very active in, in, in local temples. Um, just like, say, working class people are in traditional Catholic communities um, in Europe. Um, so no, I think you find this across the board. Uh, this is also, it has political implications. It's something the government's trying to instrumentalize as well, trying to make use of. Xi Jinping has talked very highly of Confucianism and Buddhism and so on. Um, and this has helped him win points um, where he's trying to position himself as a defender of these traditional values as well. Yeah, the, the government is obviously trying to control all these developments. Are they successful in doing that? You suggest that they are. Yeah, I think they're, um, they're somewhat successful. Uh, it's not quite to the point of, say, Vladimir Putin's Russia, where Putin has embraced the Orthodox Church and, and goes to, say, mass in churches, um, attends masses in churches. But um, the government is uh, supporting, financially supporting some of these groups. And if you want, for example, to rebuild a Buddhist or a Taoist temple, the government will give you approval right away and will um, often give you some kind of soft loans or financial help to do that. So uh, it has been behind this quite strongly. So and it's not only the, the Communist Party taking away crosses from churches. That, that's, that's what the Western media report about, but it seems to be a very limited, limited side of the whole search for, for, for values. Yeah, the cross removal campaign is real. It is a it is a clearly a violation of these people's civil liberties. It's probably illegal under Chinese law. But we have to keep in mind that this has so far been limited to one province out of China's thirty provinces. And even there, the churches themselves are not being shut down. It's just the a cross on top of the steeple is being removed, and that is bad. That's a bad, you know, that's an important symbol for Christians. I'm not trying to downplay that, but I think we have to keep it in perspective. Overall, there's a huge religious revival, this kind of great awakening going on in China. Well, thank you, thank you, Ian, and 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 well, you're working on a book on this. This this is going to uh, to appear only in uh, next year. Yeah, so it's 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 oh, even in two years time. It's probably in two years. Probably in twenty seventeen. Okay, but but this is certainly a subject that interests a lot of people, and we will come back. And if you want to hear Ian talk more about these subjects, uh, 
get in touch with the China Speakers Bureau. And um, Ian, thank you for now, and uh, talk to you okay. later. Yeah, thanks.